All right, so this is your little instruction into your project. You should have out your little rubric and your little instructions. Um, so you're going to do the volume of two objects. One will be a Hershey's Kiss, and the other will be a hollow or partially hollow solid of revolution. So you're going to use your disk method and your washer method to find the volume of two objects. Um, you cannot choose something that's a simple geometric shape, so um, not something like a can of soda or an ice cream cone where you would just use your cylinder formula or your cone formula. And actually those wouldn't work anyway because we are finding the uh, volume of the actual object, not the space that it surrounds. Okay, so for your Hershey's Kiss, which is your first thing, um, you want to first describe the process of how you got your points. So you're going to get some data points to represent your shape. Um, we're going to decide why or tell us why you picked those points and then comment on possible error. You want to give us a clear and organized, please, clear and organized table of actual data points um, with your units and then a scatter plot on your calculator of that data. Or if you want to do a computer, you could. Um, so the idea is you will present that to us in class, to your teacher in class, and we will check that off. So these are the actual points. It should be written down. It should be neat. Um, then what you're going to do is you're going to come up with an equation doing a regression on your calculator or your computer. It could be piecewise, but it, for the KISS, the piecewise is optional. So you need an equation that will match those points. For full credit, it should match the curve of the object. So it should look good when we look at your graph and when we check your table should have all the table values correct to the nearest millimeter. All right. You will show that to us sometime in the next couple weeks. Um, we will check off that your version of your equation matches your actual data. Um, when you do your graph, you will be using Boolean operators so that all we see is for each equation is the part that matches those specific points and not outside those points. And there will be a little video on how you do that that you can watch. Um, once you get your equation or equations, you're going to set up an integral to find the volume. And I want correct notation, including bounds. Um, this is not fn int notation. This is mathematical notation, such as the integral from 0 to 3 of whatever. And you can use y1, y2 notation as long as in your report you've written down what y1 is equal to. And then you can use that to do your volume. This, of course, would not get you the volume of anything. This would get you an area. When you're all done, you're going to state your volume with appropriate units. Now, your other object is a hollow or partially hollow volume of revolution. Um, first thing you want to do after you select it is you want to provide a detailed description and a sketch. A detailed description. And what I mean by detailed description is not, oh, it's pink and shiny or sparkly. Uh, the description is about really what would be relevant to your volume, the height of your object, the width, the thickness. Um, if you have a base, what's your base thickness? Um, maybe it's hollow all the way through. That's possible, but I want to know those things. Is it always hollow? Um, for those, then you're going to collect points. So you want to provide us with a clear, organized table of your actual data points. And once again, include your units and a scatter plot of that data on your calculator. Um, for this one, you are required to do a piecewise equation. So piecewise is mandatory. You'll have one equation for a certain portion of your data and then a different equation for another part. You may have two, three, four or more equations depending on what your shape looks like. Once you get that equation, you need to show us the table values for that equation on your calculator. So you will check off with your calculator for us. Um, it's, once again, it should match the curve of the object, have all table values correct to the nearest millimeter. And your endpoints for your piecewise should overlap. So when you're doing your piecewise equation, you want um, some equation for the beginning part, say 0 to 1, and then your next should include 1. So when you're doing your um, when you're doing your equation, you want them to overlap because then your integrals will overlap, but you want your same y value at the end of one and the beginning of the next. You will check off that calculator equation again. So we will look at the table. The teacher will look at the table before you complete the project. And again, you want to show on your graph that your um, curve fits your points and using Boolean operators to make it only graph each equation on its domain. So this equation would only be shown 
for points from 0 to 1, for example. Um, once you have your equations, you'll set up integrals, and there will be more than one because you have more than one equation. And this is the volume of material used to make the object. Not how much space it surrounds, but what is actually the volume of the material. To do that, you have to think about the thickness of the object and the thickness of the base, if there's a base. Um, once you get that, you want to state the volume with your appropriate units. This project will be worth 40 points. Here's how the points will break down for each part. Um, and notice again, piecewise equation for your volume of revolution, your hollow volume, for sure. Uh, here's an example of the object that I found the volume of. Um, one thing to note is I do believe you do not need this many points. I think you can get by with fewer points, but the idea that should be carried through is that where you, you have more of a curve, you need more points. And where your curve levels off, you can take fewer points. Okay? And I think you can get by with fewer points in this. You need enough, cur enough points to get a smooth curve that would match your curve. And it will be easier to do the project if you don't have too many points. Trying to match more points is actually more difficult. Um, we also are trying to find the actual volume of the object again. So you have to think about what you're rotating is not this entire region. You are not rotating this entire region you are doing some sort of washer method to get this. But then this end part will probably need to be a disk. This would be a disk, but the other part would create a washer cross-section when you um, rotate it. Right. Uh, you need to set up a piecewise equation. Once you have a y1, if you label this y1 when you are then doing your integral later, you can say from 0 to 1, I am integrating y1 dx. Don't forget your dx and your dy for correct notation. This, of course, again, would not give you your volume. But you can use this instead of having to rewrite the entire equation. Also, when you are writing out your equation, you can round to three decimal places, each coefficient. However, you should use your most exact equation in your calculator and when you are doing your um, integrals. Uh, that is the end of this video. Um, you'll have to watch the other one to actually see how to create a piecewise equation given some data, and another one to watch your Boolean operators and how to do that graphing.